We introduced the red black tree as an extension of a binary search tree that has a guaranteed big O of log n worst case time complexity to find an element. So let's actually prove this worst case time complexity. First, let's define bh of x to denote the number of black nodes from any given node x, so from some node x, to a leaf, excluding itself, so excluding x. So here's a simple example of a red black tree. Let's actually see what bh of x is. So for the root, the black height of the root is one, because even though this path to a leaf has two black nodes along it, and so does this path, and so does this path, one, two, one, two, I have to exclude x itself. So when I'm counting at the root, I cannot count the root itself. I can't count x along that count of number of black nodes. So this is actually not including itself one node, not including itself one black node, one black node. So the black height of the root is one. The black height of each of these leaves, so each of these leaves has a black height of zero. Even though each of them is itself a black node, I cannot count the node itself when I'm counting its black height. So excluding itself, there are no black nodes from the path from this leaf to a leaf because it is a leaf, so that path is just itself. And if I'm excluding itself, there's nothing. And then this node here has a black height of one. There are two possible paths from it to a leaf, this path and this path. In either of those paths, there's exactly one black node on its path to a leaf. Okay, so hopefully the concept of black height makes sense. Now, given that background, given this definition that I've provided, my claim is that any subtree rooted at x has at least two to the black height of x minus one internal nodes. I can prove that this claim is true using induction. So my base case here is when bh of x equals zero. So this happens when x is a leaf. So remember, I defined the black height of a given node to exclude itself. So regardless of if x happened to be a black node or a red node, because its black height has to exclude itself, and because the path from that node x to a leaf is just itself, it is a leaf, by definition, the black height of x must be zero. So in this base case, let's plug this in. So I'm going to plug it in to this equation. So two to the zero minus one equals one minus one, which equals zero. And indeed that is true. The black height of a leaf, so the black height of a leaf is zero and the subtree rooted at a leaf has zero internal nodes because that subtree only contains that leaf itself. So the subtree rooted at X, where X is a leaf, has at least zero internal nodes because it has exactly zero internal nodes. We've now shown that this claim that we've made does indeed hold true in our base case, which was when the black height was zero. So now let's try to generalize this. We have the same example tree from before, but let me also now draw another example tree, this one, so that we have two examples to help guide us. So let's try to generalize. So let's think of what happens generally. Uh, let's assume that our claim does indeed hold true if the black height is less than bh of x. So now let's think what happens when bh is, uh, so for actual bh of x. There's two possible scenarios for node x. One scenario, like this one, is that 
x is black and both children are also black. So when x is black and both of its children are black, by definition, if x has a black height of bh of x, each of its children must have a black height of bh of x minus 1. The reason for that is because the path from x to a leaf includes each of its children in that count. So if I'm going this way to a leaf somehow, let's say this is some arbitrary subtree. If I'm going down the left child path, I'm including the left child in that path. The left child is black. Therefore, the left child is included in bh of x. So the left child's black height must be one less than bh of x because I'm no longer able to include this child itself because I have to include nodes themselves in their counts. And then the same thing happens here. This is bh of x minus 1 for this one as well. Same reason. So when x was black and both of its children are black, this is what happens. Now let's think about when x is black, but it has at least one red child. Let's see what happens. So for example, here's the red child. The red child would have a black height of bh of x because the black height of x, so again, let's say that this is x and let's take a look at its red child. The red child's black height would also be bh of x. This is bh of x, given that this has a black height of bh of x. It would also be bh of x because along the path from x to a leaf traversing through the red child, we do not count the red child in the black height because the child is not red. Therefore, whatever number of nodes, black nodes, that I passed in this path, remember excluding x itself, so not including x, I must have passed through those exact same nodes through the red child of x, and I never included the red child of x in the black height, so it also has a black height of bh of x. So these are the two possible scenarios when x is black. Either x has two black children, in which case both of their heights are bh of x minus 1, or x is black but it has at least one red child. It could theoretically have two red children, but either way, the red children would all have heights of bh of x. And in this case, the, the black, so all black children will have height bh of x minus 1, all red children will have height bh of x. There's one last scenario to think of. So these were the scenarios when x is black. So if x is red, let's take a look at this. So I have a red node. So let's say this is x is red. So I have a red node. Remember, because of the properties of a red-black tree, red nodes cannot have red children. Therefore, if x is red, both of its children must be black, by definition. Can't have a red node with red children, therefore both of its children must be black. So if x has a black height of x, and both of its children are black, by definition, both of their black heights must be bh of x minus 1, because this child was included in the black height when I started at x. So then if I'm doing the black height starting at this node, because I have to exclude itself and because it's black, it must have a black height of bh of x minus 1. So in the worst case scenario, the most, so the largest black height that I could have uh, 
or so let, let's let's take a look so basically the number of internal nodes in any possible subtree of x is 2 to the bh of x minus 1 minus 1 it's at least this oh sorry uh plus 2 to the bh of x minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and this is because in the worst possible scenario the smallest possible black heights that i could have are this scenario both subtrees of x have bh of x minus 1 black heights therefore 2 to the bh of x minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 to the bh of x minus 1 so this is from one child this is from one child and this is x itself this is greater than or equal to 2 to the bh of x minus 1. Just mathematically, this equation is greater than or equal to that. Therefore, again, because this is the worst case possible scenario, and it still has greater than or equal to 2 to the bh of x minus 1 internal nodes, this holds true even in this generalization. Now let's try to finish up. So we had already proved that this is true in the base case. And now we've generalized it such that in the worst possible scenario, this still actually does hold true. So let's define H to be the height of my tree. So H is the height of my tree. In general, at least half of the nodes on any path from the root to a leaf must be black. And the reason for this, remember, if I have a red black tree, my worst possible scenario, because I cannot have a red node with a red child, I can, red nodes must have black children, then the longest path I could theoretically make in this tree for it to be a valid red-black tree. So I'll just stop here. Because a red node cannot have any red children, the longest path I could theoretically make would be black node, red node, black node, red node, black node, because the root also has to be black. So given that this is the longest possible pattern I can make, I'm guaranteed that the black height of X is greater than or equal to h over 2. And also, n is greater than or equal to 2 to the h over 2 minus 1. Therefore, n plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 to the h over 2. So this implies that log of n plus 1 is greater than or equal to h over 2. So we get h is less than or equal to, uh, sorry, h is less than or equal to 2 log of n plus 1. I just multiplied. So here I just took the log of both sides. Here, I just multiplied over 2. So h is less than or equal to 2 of log of n plus 1. Or in other words, h is big O of log n. So the height of my red-black tree is indeed guaranteed to be big O of log n.